So, it turns out this is a great way to get yourself some sand. Hello everyone, welcome back to Minecraft. I've seen people do this before, but I never really tried it myself. And one stack of TNT, since I didn't really have that many left after working the nether, one stack managed to get me one, two, three, and nearly a half shulker boxes worth of sand. Not bad. On top of that, I was coming out here because I wanted to make more TNT and found a surprise. I'd forgotten to come grab some of this sand, so I've got more sand than I first anticipated. And I don't have to do too much grinding. That is always nice. Oh, there's even some in here too. So, I was in need of about four shulkers worth of sand. I'm going to leave the rest there and come back for it later. Because we have some TNT to make, some cobblestone to explode, and maybe a super smelter too. Not explode the super smelter, just make, make one. <laughs> Let's get started. So I've been doing a little bit of AFK in between episodes and I've gathered myself a good amount of gunpowder back. This middle one obviously doesn't quite get as much, but these side ones are nearly up to three double chests worth, which is really nice. So I shouldn't have any trouble putting this stuff down. Oh, that's a little bit much and uh, turning all of this into TNT. Ah, okay. One shulker box worth of TNT. A little bit of spare gunpowder to put over here. We'll just sort those like that. And uh, let's see what a shulker of TNT can do as far as making myself a bunch of cobblestone to smelt because I want to get back into building these mountains. Now over here, we have set up a 64 furnace array, and I'm going to see if I can get that all working nicely. I could try some different designs. It might be better to do it all in a U-shaped uh, sort of setup so that it's a little bit nicer for loading. We'll deal with that once it comes to it, because uh, I want to make sure it's as easy and efficient as possible to do so. But on top of that, down here, this is still constantly running. And in fact, I think it is reaching the point where uh, I probably need to add more because we keep getting a bunch of extra stuff stocking up and uh, despawning. So I need to add some more and probably expand this a little bit. That'll help us get more of these, speed up the process, and just all around it'll be more efficient. So here's the plan. I want to expand the kelp farm down there first so that it's making use of all of the kelp that I have available here. Then I want to build myself a cobblestone generator probably over at the end out there that we can use this TNT on hopefully set it up so that it uh, drops the TNT at a correct interval and blows up some generated stone and then we're going to feed the results of that directly into our furnace array connect it all up together and hopefully pull all of it out and feed it directly into shulk boxes because uh yeah, we've got plenty of shulker shells now. <laughs> the farm works really well, and I don't have to worry. I can get another six or 700 in about an hour's time. So that's the goal. I think I'm going to uh, try and do a bunch of that first and bring you guys in if I've designed something that works. I don't want to uh, sit here umming and ahhing about the different ways that I could put it together. Let's just see if we can design up a nice little area to combine all of those things together and produce a stone. I have some faith in myself. <laughs> Let's see how we go.
I need more deep slate. Not necessarily for anything important, just to do some decorating. But we do have a nice area. Let's go have a look. First and foremost, I have expanded this to be twice the size. And although it doesn't look like it's all running right now, it is actually slowly filling up to the point where uh, I believe it should get a couple more across. And it might even reach the point where, even if it's not fully keeping these barrels full, we might be able to have the whole lot running. Now, there is one small thing about this setup that I've realized it doesn't actually turn off until a little bit into the night. So if I sleep before the light level gets low enough, this system doesn't run. So I need to make sure, one, I either work out how to adjust that, or... So I need to make sure on those sort of nights where I come in and sleep a little bit early that we come through and manually activate this. And that's why I have this button. Yeah. Now, as you can see, this is working really well. I think on average, it does get a fair few thousand every single day, which is really, really nice. A lot of it bunches up at this end because of the flying machine. And even on the way back, he manages to get a couple extra, which is really cool. That's all coming down here. It fills up the stuff that has been burnt during the previous day. Make sure that all of these are prepared. It'll refill up that. And then we start getting over into this section. So it was definitely necessary for me to, uh, to set this up. And I do believe now these are almost at the point where they will be filling up in the next day or two. And that means that this one will start to fill up with the extra and so on and so forth. That is now all connected through here. I have connected it back up and let's go have a proper look at the area. This is now my stone generator. Yeah, what do you reckon, buddy? This thing, once turned on, I'm really hoping should be able to generate us shulker boxes and shulker boxes worth of stone in a fun and interesting way without us having to mine any stone. And while I'm building around this area, it should continue to run and do its thing. I have a little bit of a staircase I'm working on to get me up there. Even though I can fly, it'll be nice in the dark once this section of the mountain is complete to have a little spot to walk up. That's why I'm working on these walkways just for funsies. And I needed a little extra deep slate. But let's go over what this does. First and foremost, we have a cobblestone generator and one that doesn't use TNT duping. So this is my loading section for the TNT and all I have to do is hit this and it will start the process. This is going to provide a decent amount. I don't know the rates just yet, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere up around the 30 or 40,000 mark per hour, potentially more. But the main point is I believe per stack of TNT, it should provide around three shulker boxes worth or more, similar to the uh, to the sand setup that I was doing earlier in the episode. It should provide us around three or four shulker boxes worth of cobblestone to turn into stone. From there, it comes down into this system and works its way along this water line that ends up over here, drops down, and will feed a 64 smelter super smelter. Each one of these just goes directly into a hopper that feeds a furnace. And that means that I can store six stacks per furnace. Six times 64 is like three, 380, 390, something stacks. Three, hmm, hold on, 384, 384 stacks of material. That is just over 24 and a half thousand blocks or a little bit over 14 shulker boxes worth of materials. So the idea is that I can turn this on and it will feed all of this ready to go. And I can build up a little supply of stone ready to start smelting. Over here is the line where the fuel actually comes up and it puts itself into this chest. As you can see, I've actually put away a bunch of it into the system already. And I do need to fiddle with these timings because they did work when I was getting it directly out of a hopper, but I think the transfer rate from a chest into a hopper minecart might be slightly different from hopper into hopper minecart. But either way, this little system allows the minecart to stop there just long enough to gather a stack or more. I did have it set up to gather a stack and one to guarantee that it had enough to evenly distribute, but 
This cart goes around the outside, placing a single piece of fuel into every single smelter. And then it comes up over across the top and back into position here where it will pause on this cool down and go again. Now I'm going to turn that off because I don't have the timing set up correctly anymore. I was uh, fiddling around with this for a little while trying to make it work. But that will allow me to fuel all of these evenly, which is really nice. And refilled. Nice. And so I have the fuel line completely set up. Then we have this in here. This minecart comes across and will collect all of the items out of the inside. And I have a little design here from Il Mango, which is an automatic cart unloader. What happens here is it comes up and it destroys the cart, depositing all the items into that area there. And those items should, in a big burst, come across into this system, which is a fairly simple tileable shulker box loader. I went with the tileable version because it's one that I've done before, but you could use any sort of shulker box loader in this setup. But over here, I have prepared all of the shulkers that we'll need and this will be where they come. This system's really cool. It's something that's a little bit newer. There is some lava in a cauldron behind here. And as the cart comes up, it is aligned by that piece of amethyst. Even though it's hard to see, it doesn't actually show the action of it hitting it. As far as the game is concerned, my understanding is that it aligns the cart with that amethyst and it tries to connect back down to this rail. It does that because this is considered less than a full block. So as it falls, it's trying to align itself with there, but then it touches the lava and it's destroyed, dropping all the pieces that it contained into that spot. But before the lava can destroy the actual cart itself, there is a hopper underneath that is loaded into this dropper here. We'll see it happen shortly. And this system pops it back out the top onto this angled rail and then sends it back on its way. And you can shut this off so that it stores the cart by just adding a switch over on this. So this whole area has just become a bit of a combination of a bunch of different designs. The super smelter is mine. This section over here is completely mine. This is obviously Il Mango's. And I'm not sure who came up with the original design for the, uh, the shulker box loaders, but... I believe now this is fairly standard. And this cobblestone generator is from a small channel called Sci Scythe. I don't know whether they're associated with the Psycraft people, but it is a nice, simple design that doesn't require the use of TNT duping, which is handy for me. Obviously, I don't want to dupe. So let's go sleep, and I think we will load up our cobblestone generator and see whether it works. Hopefully that whole explanation was simple enough and you understand the process but we will turn it on and see if i can uh, get it running also did i stay up late enough for this to automatically run i did yeah i'll finish that staircase later actually no i'll finish that staircase now okay better <laughs> i've got myself a way up here now i just noticed that this isn't quite even Oh, maybe I only want to do that too wide. Anyway, I can now come over here with my TNT and load this up. Now, obviously, with the combination of the dropper or the dispenser down here, the hopper and this, we can do a little bit more than a shulker box of TNT, but at least I know that this should work. This is kind of it. Now, if I was smart, I would have done this in a slightly different order where... I wouldn't have uh, loaded the fuel into those just quite yet because it is going to start filling up those first ones. It might have been nice to get the system primed with some uh, cobblestone first and then put in the fuel, but it is okay. I think we're just going to see how this goes. And it puts the TNT into there, which stops it just long enough. To do that. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I have a little bit of uh, build up down the bottom, which isn't meant to be there. So we might manually destroy that. And we might also lower our volume just a smidge real quick. 
I've got to be a little bit careful not to get hurt by that TNT. But the way that this works is as far as I understand, when a block is being moved by a piston, that block during the moment of being moved, during the tick of being moved, has zero blast resistance. As such, the instant that that TNT explodes, these pistons are moving the tape of cobblestone down and it makes it so that they all explode really, really easily. Seems to be working. So now, all of that cobblestone is coming across and being fed into here very quickly. And we should see this stone being removed by this cart as it comes past. Beautiful. I'm going to put my sounds back up. And instead, I'm going to use my muffler for TNT. No, explosion. Why do I have caps lock on? That's the one. Let's just lower the sound of that a little bit so it's not too rough. So this is feeding the cobblestone through nice and quickly. It won't take long because this blows it up in chunks. So they will come through, fill up these hoppers really, really fast. And then what I want to do, I haven't done it just yet, but I do want to have just a little chest by here high enough that this little hopper minecart won't interact with it but a spot for me to collect just a little bit of extra cobblestone because I do like to use cobblestone for things every now and again. And it's very convenient. TNT is flowing through there nicely. I think it's working. I think this is working. Now, once this is fully fired up, this is gonna be smelting 64 items every 20 seconds. So it shouldn't take too long to fill up a shulker box, but hopefully without too much trouble, Quite soon, we should see that shulker being filled. Now, I do want to see how this works. As this comes back, it's not going to have the most amount of materials, but we should see them go down into here. Hopefully, if this all works. I haven't actually tested it. Yeah, perfect. So the little slab on top of here stops the items from floating up out, and then they just go down into the hopper. Great, my machine. It works. <laughs> it works. I'm actually really, really happy with this. The way that this has all come together is really nice. Blocks go flying through there. Smelted up stone. This is flowing nicely. Starting to fill up. Look at that. Plenty of cobblestone. And essentially, this should be able to fill that up while it's smelting. And then when I turn it off... We should be left with basically another 24-ish thousand blocks ready to go if I just decide to turn on the smelter at any given time. And what I mean by that is if there is no dried kelp blocks, I can allow those to build up in here. And because there is 54 slots in there and five in there, that means that we will almost have enough to completely fill this whole system. Okay, they're slowly filling up and activating fully. This is working away nicely. Let's have a look. Now, to be fair, a lot of that is in there. So there's nine. Some of that. Be interesting to see how much the full shulker box does. But I'm going to keep an eye on this until we are completely full and all of these furnaces are running. How did you get some? Did that blow over the edge, maybe? Weird. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be blowing over the edge. Okay, so I might have to do a little bit of adjustment to make sure that they all go into their spot. Yes, okay. We are losing a few items, so I'm going to uh, adjust that. I'm going to make that a little bit more safe. But this is working. Amazing. I'll let that uh, fire up. We'll fix our little chamber down there so that it collects all of the items. And with a bit of luck, we'll have shulker boxes worth of stone. Ah, cool. Well, well, well. At this rate, it looks like it's going too fast for a hopper. This uh, this isn't even fully up and running yet. I still got a couple more to go and it is going faster than this individual one can handle. So the beauty of this being tileable is I think I should be able to build the exact same one right next to it and uh, and have both of these running at the same time. So this is slowly making its way through. There does seem to be a leak somewhere. I'm 
not exactly sure how it's getting out. I patched this up and I even added a little bit of an extra layer up here of the obsidian. And I haven't seen any for a minute. Oh, there's a bit over there. So I don't know exactly how it's coming out. But yeah, where there's just some weird, funny stuff going on with the explosions and whatnot. Either way, it seems to be running fairly smoothly still. If we jump up top here, yes, I did make this too wide. It finished loading all of the stuff in and it is now going through these basically every single time it ticks. Still have a full dispenser, a full hopper and this many to go. So probably about halfway through and most of this system is loaded up. So very interested to see what happens here. But yes, I do need to build another one because this is very quickly going to fill up the amount of stone that I have. So let's make a second shulker box loader right next to this and see if that handles the load. I hope so. Okay, so I had to go three wide. <laughs> and uh, as it so turns out, as far as I am aware, it's more that this is one tile thick, like one block thick. It's not tileable. I don't think I can put these next to each other because it will just fire all of the shulkers at the same time. But that's okay. They're still nice and space saving and it's allowed me to make three of them. Now, <laughs> during that process, I had a bunch that was just overflowing. So we do have a couple extra shulkers here. I'm just going to put those over in there because they would have gone into that. And now it's just a matter of letting this run. I had to turn that off because we had a bunch of cobblestone just spewing out. So I've made this little section here to oh, pick up the extra cobblestone. <laughs> that can go down in there. So I now have the overflow for the cobblestone. I still have the entire dispenser and I think most of the, uh, the hopper ready to go. And there's still plenty of dried kelp blocks in these. Plus, during the process of doing that, yeah, okay, that has started to build up again. So I, th I honestly think this system's pretty good. What a fun thing to play around with. I really do love this aspect of Minecraft, just being able to put together crazy creative things and have it all work in the end. If we watch here, we should see one or two stacks worth coming flying out and going through the process. Hey bud, what do you reckon? So this will come up, drop its stacks off like so. And yes, it does need to go over into this end one here. So that's processing, that's processing, and that one's gone all the way through. Why'd that go double speed? I feel like that one's going faster than the rest, but either way, this is all set up now, bringing in stacks and stacks of stone and turning it into shulkers for us to use and make mountains out of. Now, I'm just gonna take the stuff out of this and I'm gonna go blip, 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 blip. There we go. You can load up over there. Another one comes through here. Beautiful. And I might just make a little hopper line underneath these like so. And that can all go into a nice, easily accessible double chest at the end. Did I only grab one chest? I did. So, four shulker boxes worth of stone so far during the process of getting things a little bit more organized. But as you can see, there is still plenty going on. Why do these ones have 22? Oh, because these were cooking first, of course. Of course. So what I might do is spend the next couple of hours um, fiddling around, playing around on the base. Uh, I'm going to do some cleaning up over here. I think I might uh, clear all of this stuff out, deal with my shulker boxes, deal with all of the junk that I've generated over this project, this making this area and all of the, uh, the smeltery together. In doing so, I'm going to keep generating some more kelp and this is going to run completely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play and refresh this until I have gone through all of this TNT. So I have nine in the dispenser below, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 and a half, a little over 13 and a half. So yeah, I, I literally have half of a shulker box left. I'm going to go through and I want to see how much stone 
and cobblestone, of course, an entire shulker box worth of TNT will get me in this system. Because I know with one stack of TNT, I can go out into a desert and basically get almost four shulkers of sand in a very short amount of time. I can essentially... Oh, this is not good. I might need to adjust that. Or did I throw that one? I might have. Uh, I basically know that I can go and get enough sand for a shulker of TNT in a couple of minutes. As long as I have the gunpowder prepared, that means that I can load this system up ready to go in a couple of minutes. Like, say, 10 or 15 minutes, I can go and get what I need prepared. And I want to know how much that is going to get me when it comes to turning all of it into stone. Oh, we got another shulker box. Nice. So that could take me potentially quite a few hours. As such, I'm just going to uh, get to it, do some cleaning up. I'll let you know if anything significant happens. I might clean up some of these areas, but in general, a long overdue clean of shulker box monsters and chess monsters. I might clean up this exit that I always use and make that a little bit more accessible because the amount of times that I fly out here, it's obviously where I want to leave from. So I'm going to turn that into a access panel or an access port through there. Clean up all of this. And in fact, I might even go about processing and starting to put some things inside my main storage hall. So let's see how that goes. And it'll be a perfect example of how me pottering around and doing things that are necessary, building and whatnot around this area will allow that to run. And then that way I know whether or not it's working. Oh, this fourth one seems to be up and running just. Oh, perfect. Proof of concept though. I know when a hopper at the top there has items in it, that means that the entire system is full and it will move on to the next one. And it looks like it's nearly there for this one too. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. So time for me to just settle in for some good old fashioned Minecraft, working away at my projects. And I'll see you guys once I've made an entire shulker of TNT, exploded into cobblestone, and then smelted into stone, worth of stone. <laughs> but for you guys, that's just going to be one quick transition. In fact, I think I mostly lined that transition up. <laughs> we are done. And like I said... It was a couple of hours. I added an extra one of these shulker loaders because this thing was cranking. All of these machines are done. All of the TNT is finished. And I've even emptied out the fuel so that next time I run that, I can pre-fill it. And we have a slightly nicer distribution of fuel. Yeah. And this was such a perfect way for me to... Uh, justify why I've done this. Being able to work on things around the base, cleaning up chest monsters, opening up areas in here that I can fly out of a little bit nicer, patching holes and whatnot, and even, to a certain degree, moving myself in <laughs> to my, uh, my storage rooms. I've started the process of just organizing things. This side here is stuff that is found in nature, be it ores, animal drops, or loot and stuff that you would find around the place and other nature-based things. And then this side over here is where I'm putting stuff like man-made items or collected materials. So I still need a little bit more leather, but I am starting to work that out. I've done a lot of clearing up. I had random little boxes of bits and pieces everywhere. And it feels really nice to have finally started to uh, take care of the stuff that I had just dotted around. And now the answer to the question that I had. <laughs> okay. So we have... Uh, what is it per 9, 18, 27, 36 shulker boxes. I kept exactly one uh, shulker worth of cobblestone in here. And I would say that these still have some in them as well. So what I'm going to do is I have a manual button on the back, which will break all of those and load a fresh shulker in. Okay. I'm going to grab those shulker boxes and just uh, consolidate them into what we have remaining. That's two completely fresh ones that can just feed back into the system like so. And so I want to work out how many resources I generated. Let's, uh, let's sleep for the night. 
so that I don't have this rain. We'll probably have to manually turn on our farm over here that we may have slept a little bit too early for. So let's just do that. It's going back to the two. We'll see what happens with that in the future, but I'm happy with the setup. And let me do some calculations. Oh, so I have 36, 37 shulker boxes worth of stone, which is 63,936. Oh, 63,936. That's satisfying. Worth of stone in those. Plus an additional uh, 18 stacks plus 48. Turns it into 65,136. And then we have this shulker worth of cobblestone. Makes for a total of 66,864 blocks from one shulker box of TNT. Nice. A little over 66,000 blocks created from about 1,700 TNT or a couple of minutes of working in a desert. Not bad. And in doing so, it has allowed me to move around my world and do some work. <laughs> some long needed work. Cleaning things up and organizing my storage a little bit. And that means that with this system now, as I'm working away on these mountains, I can just turn it on and it will generate up a bunch more shulker boxes. The time that it's going to take me to do these mountains should be roughly enough time for this to continue to generate the amount of resources that I need. And so I should be about ready to get to work. Now, not only do I have that stuff there that I just generated, I also probably have, hmm, let's see. Yeah, a couple of double chests worth. Maybe enough to bring it up close to 100,000 stone in the bank with more being uh, put in there right now from here. So I think I'm just about ready. I think it's time. I think we can start working on some cliffs again. I love my machine. <laughs> I really do. And I hope you guys do too. I think we're going to end the episode here. And in the next one, I want to maybe bring these cliffs up to that height and come across here a little bit. Maybe do some work to enclose this area a bit more and make it feel a little bit more like it's going to once we have uh, a finished product. So I'm going to prepare myself for that and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. You allow me to do this full time and it does mean a lot. Any support over there is truly appreciated. And to everyone who's been watching, thank you so much and I hope you're having a good time. I hope you like my silly machine that is just an elaborate excuse to stop me from mining out big sections of stone in the overworld and also something fun to try out that is a little bit different than usual. But with all that being said, until the next time, I hope you all take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye-bye everyone. Uh...